Hello. So we're going to have another look at starting the Azure Poly Transcell C160 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. During the first recording, I didn't realize that Flight Simulator had thrown me a curveball and messed up the profile of my throttle quadrant. So even though I copied the default throttle quadrant profile, it didn't copy it properly. And therefore I couldn't get the propellers to go into their beta range, so I couldn't put reverse thrust into play in the aircraft, which was strange. Anyway, I recopied the default profile again, and now it's working. So we're gonna run back through the startup procedure that I've written down, and I'll follow it a bit more closely than I did the first time. I always struggle with talking on a video and reading instructions and demonstrating. I always get lost or want to show something of interest along the way and deviate, and then I lose the train of thought. So I'm gonna try and stick to the procedure this time. So we get inside the airplane. We go to the EFB and we remove the covers and the wheel chocks and we get rid of the EFB. We're finished with it for the moment. Okay, so then we press control and six to go overhead and we turn the battery on for bat one and we get the horn that's a bug in the aircraft so we go and turn the horn off we go back overhead control six to return battery number two on you can see the am ammeters for the batteries are showing the levels there and then we can come back down to the instrument panel now and we can go and turn up the brightness on the attitude indicator and on the horizontal situation indicator okay then we go over to the central console where we do most of the config work from now on and we can go and turn both of the INS knobs to nav and let them align then we can go to the APU section at the top right let's just correct some of these switches that are in the wrong positions in the airplane by default okay so we're going to go to the air inlet valve and open it. We're going to then hit the start button and that starts the APU. And then we can press control two and we can watch on the meters over here. There's the, the RPM of the auxiliary power unit. So the auxiliary power unit is a small jet engine that will provide compressed air or just electrical power. I'm not sure how it does it in this aircraft. Yeah, we can see pressure is building up so I think it does use compressed air I may be wrong so APU is now up and running so we can jump overhead and we can turn the um, cross feed switch up here to G5 which means we're using <coughs> the power from the APU now okay we can then turn all of the transfer switches or pull all the transfer switches so they're pointing forwards so there's those two, there's two in the middle as well. And now we get into the point where we're starting the engines. So we go and turn the anti-collision lights on. We go back down to the central pedestal. We put the master ignition switch to the on position, which is the down or towards us position. We turn the bleed air on at this point. We check both of these idle condition levers are pulled back. Then we go to the fuel pump section and we're going to do engine number two first. So we turn on all of the pumps for engine number two. Then we uncage the start switch for engine number two and we push it forwards. The light comes on and engine two will come to life. If we go and press control two, we can watch that happening. So the APU is busy providing the compressed air to spin the engine up. We wait until it gets to 2000 RPM. So we're just waiting for that needle to, to turn around. When it gets to 2000 RPM, we can go to the condition levers and move engine two condition to low idle. So this is engine two condition. So we move it to low idle. Okay, so then we can press control two, sorry, control two, and we can watch the RPM coming up. As it comes up, we can advance the 
um, the idle lever to norm or the forwards position. So at this point the engine is up and running so we can turn the starter off and close the cage on it. Then we can go overhead and we can turn on the generators that are connected to engine number two. So that's generators three and four. If anyone knows why that light doesn't go out yet, I'd love to know. Okay, then we go to start engine number one. So we come back down, we turn on the fuel pumps for engine number one. We uncage the starter and we start engine number one. So again, we can press control and two and we can watch the RPM coming up. When it gets to 2000 RPM, we will advance the fuel condition lever for engine number one to the idle position. So it's in shut off, we push it forwards and it clicks into idle and then the engine will come up. You'll see the RPM increase as it goes round, as it ignites, starts burning fuel. So you can see the temperatures coming up. PSI is increasing. And we can advance the idle condition lever for engine number one to norm as well. Once the engine is actually running, we can turn the starter off and cage it. We can go overhead. We can switch on the generators for engine number one. You can see the needles are both showing there. Good. So then we can come back down to the pedestal. And we can turn off, we've done the start of engine number one, so now we can turn the APU off basically. So bleed air can come off, the APU can be switched off, the air inlet can be switch, can be closed. If we go back overhead, we can then disengage the, the cross feed for the APU. So we're no longer using the APU at this point. So just double checking, all of the generators are up and running. So back down on the pedestal we can go and disengage the master ignition switch and we can now busy ourselves with other things the engines are now running essentially so we can go and turn on the flight management computer we can turn on the IFF or transponder in norm mode it's just a a transponder basically um, there are various bits of the aeroplane that I've not really explored yet. I'm not going to get into them. You can tune radios and things like that in the FMC, but it doesn't have a lot of functionality yet. Um, there's some nice bits of functionality up here. <laughs> so this system, if you turn it on, is the flare system. So you can fire flares out of the aircraft. In the real thing, apparently, it has an automatic defence system where if something is fired at it, it will start spitting flares out at quite a rate of knots. Um, the aircraft does have autopilot built in. I'm not going to get into it today. We were just looking at starting the aeroplane up, really. Um, but if you were getting ready for flight, you'd have to go overhead. You'd go and turn on the position lights and then you would come back down and just above the pilot here we've got the I just straighten this up got the landing lights and the taxi lights so you can see we're all lit up now so obviously having the throttles configured properly we can now come off the parking brake and we get a very small amount of positive thrust but if we put the throttles into beta, we can actually reverse, which is lovely. Okay, so obviously that small amount of positive thrust brings us to a stop. 
So that's all I really wanted to cover today was just going through that startup procedure again, doing it following the checklist, and again I'll put it in the notes, and showing that it can actually be done in a sensible manner. And I was maybe a little bit unfair thinking the aeroplane was broken when actually it was Flight Simulator had thrown me a curveball. Yeah, so there you go. So that's the C160 Transol in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.